Hello. I am finishing Boogeyman today. Today is the last boogie. <coughs> Sorry. Here is the thing. As we all know, yesterday there was a disaster. Do not worry. You don't have to watch me play the whole game again. I have taken the liberty of playing most of the game again and stopping where the disaster was yesterday. So I am just going to continue from the disaster. Skip. Okay. Oh, here's what I forgot. I turned the volume off completely when I was doing it earlier. So, oops. I can't hear anything in here, but I'll fix that after I deal with this. Okay, don't step in the puddle, because I think that's what the disaster was yesterday. Oh no, he is stuck! Also, I'm going to choose not to save here. Just in case that's not what the disaster was yesterday. Because that would be quite embarrassing. Go down to the waterway. I also unlocked that before this, before the time crunch. Do nothing. <sighs> Hello, Mr. Towel. I've got you. Item. Towel. Wrap towel around arm. Back over here. Zoom! Now reach in for key. It's locked. Not anymore. Yippee! Okay, I'm going to skip anyway. Okay, I'm good and fine. Now, oh, that's not what I want to do, continue. First I will save, and then I will go system. You, I want you back to normal level. Oh, I don't want you louder than normal, I didn't know that was an option. And you also back to normal level. Exit configurations. Perfect. Oh, my computer volume is louder than I thought it was. Okay. I should be good, though. I'm fine. I can skip this, it wouldn't have changed. Saturn, hi! My best friend. Not my best friend, probably. But I just think he's funny. We're in. Iron door, it's locked.
Ooh. Oh, by the way, this will be a tiny stream because I'm not doing anything after I get this ending. <laughs> I wish I could skip this conversation at least earlier. I can't remember if I can skip it at all. I th no, yeah, I definitely can because this is when I'm going to see the child backstory. Skip. Is this? Oh, I don't remember this being here. An old video camera. It appears to be busted. Got an old video camera. A few bloodstains are scattered on the floor. That's not how you describe a liquid. Splattered, perhaps? Cupboards. The tableware is coated in dust. A stone oven. An old clock hangs on the wall. It doesn't seem to work. Shelves, they're filled with miscellaneous items. Shelves, they're filled with miscellaneous items. And it is the same. The candle stand is on the floor. Okay. Painting. Ah! Okay. Five, seven, eleven. Magazine from about ten years ago. Old videotape, there's a movie title and label. Old video camera, take out tape and play it. It is Helena. At last, I finally got a hold of you. Oh dear, hurt all over. But what else could I do? You just wouldn't stop running, miss, no matter how much I hurt you. But ah uh, well, our game of tags come to a close now. Yes, you couldn't outrun the scary, scary boogeyman. Are you relieved it's over? Or are you still scared? Well, madam. Do you want to run? You're an unbelievable idiot. Say again. I called you an idiot. You thought I was running because I was scared? You think I'm scared of you? Maybe you've spent too long in your little closet world to understand. You've convinced yourself that women and children are all scared of you. What were you playing? What were you planning once you caught me? Kill me? And then what? You'd go to kill Keith, right? You told me you had Keith in your hands. Whether he'd live or die was up to me. I guess that was true. In all this time you've been foolishly chasing after me. You could never kill him. I'm weak. I can't be as strong as Keith is. But there is something I can do in all my weakness. If I can keep your attention away from Keith by running all the time, I'll run to the ends of the earth. 
You poor, stupid little boogeyman. I'm real. You really are just a child. You really are such a child. You just love bullying anyone weaker than you. Go ahead, have fun in your little world. Call yourself a villain, a monster. But I'll never let you bring my husband into it. Don't you dare lay a hand on him. You tried to make him not as your husband. Hmm. I don't think that is Helena saying that. I think that is a mistake. So I'm going to say that that's Boogeyman saying it. You talk too much, madame. That's terrible. Let's hurry and look for Helena. She must be nearby. Keith? Keith, what are you doing? We have to hurry. Keith, are you listening? Hey, what are you staring at? Are you asleep? Get a grip, come on. Push. I'm awake. <laughs> David, you look for Helena. She should be near. Huh? What about you? What are you going to do? <clears throat> I'm going to go kill a monster. I can't do his voice anymore. It's so upsetting. Oh, the phone is ringing. the door open and don't turn out the lights in the hall. Uh, there's no way that was the kid's voice before. <laughs> so I will rethink that before the next line. Why? The boogeyman will come. What kind of guy is this boogeyman? He has long nails and kidnaps kids. He lives in the closet. A kidnapper? Well, can't leave a guy like that on the loose. All right, Dad'll give him a good beating. Hey, Boogie, you in there? What the? Hey, let go. Dad? Dad? Oof. He was a little tough, but I got him good. No. Oh. My screen turned off. There we go. I would have been so mad if that happened at any other time. <laughs> no worries, son. Old Boogie won't come for you anymore. Really? Would I lie? Me and Mom are in the bedroom right there, you know. You still scared? Oh, need your stuff funny, do you? Or should I read you a bedtime story? Maybe the ones with the fairies. No way, I'm not a wuss, ba Dad. I can sleep by myself. That's the spirit. Listen, Todd. If the boogeyman comes to get you again, Dad'll beat him up. I'm not gonna let anyone mess with you or Mom. Cause you're a police officer? Cause I'm Dad. Period. No space. Good night, son. Should I leave the light on? It's okay. I've got you and Mom. Good night. I love you. Don't. 
blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the boogie. Have you ever thought about it, detective? Thought you have an enemy? Who or what it is, you don't even know. Maybe it doesn't even exist. Maybe it's all in your head. But, you know, there's something tormenting you. Always making it so, so painful. You feel like the whole world's out to make you suffer. Too troublesome to make an enemy of the whole world, right? So, just making one enemy will do. I choose you as my enemy. Have I become yours? Oh well, either way, we're gonna settle this right here. Let's end this wonderful game now. Can you beat this final boss and take back your beloved wife? He's laughing. Oh, and then he coughed, and it was gross. What's so funny? Boy, you're really having a blast, huh? What's so funny that you can be all smiles all the time? Total opposite of me. I don't remember the last time I laughed. You just did. But I guess we were pretty similar after all, in the sense that it was all a lie. You're always grinning ear to ear, but you're scared, aren't you? So you keep running. You can't go ahead. You can't go head to head with me. You and me are just acting. You're no scary monster, and I'm no paragon of justice. Final boss, ha. A big baddie should be a pretty sly guy, shouldn't they? But taking hostages, always on the run. The only thing you can chase after is girls' rumps. Not necessary. You know, oh. You know, I wasn't planning to do anything with you. As long as the others were safe, I was fine leaving you be. I'd secure your hostages and scram, then just leave you to the local police. Because I'm not chasing you, you just keep running from me. What I'm really chasing after. Sorry, but it ain't you. That's right, it's not you. You're my enemy? Spare me the sleep talk. Why would I make my enemy a dunce who just sneaks away? A coward who hides in the closet and threatens kids? And your enemy? Not me, either. You've got a lot more enemies. If you go to the slammer, you're gonna be a real popular guy, I can tell. He's clapping, but in the weirdest way. But this is a sec but this is a great chance. No hostages to get in my in the way, no one watching. So I can do whatever I like with you. Detective, criminal, that doesn't matter now. You've done the number one thing to get on my bad side. Threaten my wife? Yeah. Oh cool. You chased after my wife's rump. This is ridiculous. That alone is enough reason for me to beat you down. Don't you think, Boogie? There was a gross little sound. It was like... <laughs> Can't afford to laugh anymore, can you? Back to your closet, boogeyman. You don't have... You don't have what it takes to make it over here. Okay, save. There is a fight here, so... Let's see. <laughs> Press C or button 3. Oh, dead. Okay. 
Why does it say press C or button 3? I don't get it. Load here. Oh! That might be a bracket, actually, not a C. Whoa! He's so much stronger than me, I think. I think... Did I kill him? No. He killed me. Okay, where there's my bracket key. Let's see what that does. And when do I need to press it here? That's so confusing. I don't know what I'm doing there. Oh, I'm only giving him five damage. That might be the problem. Ah, but he gives me 20. I don't think that's fair. Ah, this is ridiculous. What are we doing here? Yeah, that was for the best. Honestly, I was at 10. There was no way he wasn't going to hit me again. Okay, load. Okay, button one. Is that just the one key? No. Okay. System. Button three. Sub button. Huh. Of course. Let's see about that one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't... There. Z. I can't see him! <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Ah! <laughs> Game over. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny that it doesn't work. <laughs> well, it did more damage than the other thing, so at least there's that. I wonder if my other shift key also works, because that would be way more convenient. <laughs> ah! Ah! I'm only at 10. How do I, Why is it just sometimes? I don't understand when I can do my special attack. Aha! It worked there. Maybe if I'm a certain distance away? I don't know. Aha! I'm not reading these out. I don't want to. This is what it looks like. It's really just flavor text. It doesn't matter. <laughs> And most of the time I can't even see the thing. So. Did I win? Yes. I did. Where do you think you're going, Lance? I'm gonna find them. They've been gone way too long. 
Did you forget what Keith said? It'll be a burden on him to move around on your own. Well, then after all's said and done, we'll tell him we just did what he said. We did just what he said. Of course, you might have all gone stone cold by that time. Don't joke about things like that. Sounds like a joke to you. Uh, we've got two, maybe three corpses around here. What part of don't, don't you get? S stop, you two. Don't fight. We'll go search together. I'll lead the way. You are the weakest. Sophie and Shirley, you hold hands. And Lance, you watch the rear. Papa. You really want to go? Yes, we'll be all right together. And there's something I'm curious about. What's that? This whole incident may just be a great big farce. What do you mean? Let's be going. Zoom. Helena, where are you? Helena. Oh, there was a little bonkin. <laughs> I don't know. Little thump thump thump. It's there again. It's so quiet I can barely hear it, so Ah She go she kind of gasped. Helena David Are you okay? I that man knocked me out. I woke up here. I was unconscious the whole time. Keith! Helena! Keith, where are you? Always on the run, huh? But marijuana addicts can move better than you. <laughs> okay. What's in that ba- What's in that big head of yours? Brendan. Oh no. <laughs> I can't remember what Brendan's voice was like. I think it was vaguely Tomaki Suo. <laughs> uh. You lose. Which is fitting for the voice I gave the boogeyman. It was pretty similar, I think. Detective. Uh-oh. Keith! You're... Brendan? Why? Stop moving around. Keith, Helena! We have to stop the bleeding. Lance. Richard, help me out! Sophie, find something to tie him with. Keith. He did a weird little laugh. Got you. Keith, you... Helena, when we get home, let's finish our conversation. No more running. Keith, stay with me, please. Keith! <laughs> the servants and Stevie, ten people died, all told. I'm sure glad to be alive now, feeling glad to even have air to breathe. Listen, don't you say a word about all this, especially not to your co-workers. If it takes money to shut your yap, I'll pay any price. Whoa, bribery! Where's that money coming from? 
my own pockets. Listen, you guys can distort the truth all you want, and I won't say a peep, because that's freedom of the press. But this, this is different. I've got no tolerance for people pointing and laughing at a wounded friend. Do I gotta tell you again? I'm not a gossip guy. I hate cops, sure, but I hate gossip too. I won't ask for money, but I won't... I won't ask for money, and I won't say a peep, because I'm grateful to the guy. So quit hounding me. But, as an involved party, I've got a right to know what happened there. Just can't wrap my head around it. I talked to Brendan at dinner. Heard he got tired of the musty old castle and ran to Hollywood. Had a lot of fun in the movie biz. So what was the motive? Guy's gone silent. Sounds like he convinced you he was a goody two-shoes, but I bet you'd hear a different story in Hollywood. Now that's the kind of thing your lot should be writing about. Nobody knows people's pasts, usually, but it's easy to fool you into thinking otherwise with a little acting. And once you know somebody's past, you can lead him by the nose. He tricked you all and tried to kill you. What a farce. Not sure of the moment. Not sure of the motive yet, but he was pretty systematic about it. About it all, maybe. Spent a ton of cash beforehand to check up on all the tour attendees. Even did a background check on me. On you? Why? Because I was going to be on that tour. No wonder I thought you knew me. The hell? So he just researched us? That's the oldest trick in the book for us, saying, I know all about you. It makes you superior to the other person, so you can control them. Then they freak out and have to submit. He knew that tactic well. Seeing right through people without any tricks, what's that makes... That's what makes a real monster, ain't it? In this case, he just used money and connections to dig up people's pasts and played the part of a monster. But the research wasn't so wasn't to select candidates, so he just picked randomly. Damn! Was he just in it for fun? Now my turn to ask questions. What you tell me is the only way I can figure out this incident. Give me anything you got. First, Brendan, or Boogie, rather. What kind of man was he? How should I say it? I suppose he had no emotion. That's how I saw him. He said such terrifying things without a care. He hardly showed any human feelings. He really was a monster. Keith told me he was a real jester. Jester? Absolutely not. I would have much preferred it... I would have much preferred if he were at least a little silly. He was a very disturbing, terrifying man. He was totally calm as he did awful things. Richard, you seem to have a suspicion he might be Brendan. Why did you think that? When my daughter went missing, and I panicked, thinking that man could have taken her, Keith told me something. This was the kind of person who would show corpses as decoration. So if he did take Sophie, he'd show off proof of it, meaning she was still safe. Luckily enough, I didn't see them, but indeed, evidently, there were many ba uh, there were many dead bodies left around. As Keith said, my daughter hadn't fallen into his grasp. He was correct in his assumption. He was correct in his assumption. That made me realize something unusual, unusual about what he'd said. Keith said he saw the moment Brendan's neck snapped, and his corpse was, cri was quickly dropped into the basement. Isn't that odd? Why did he quickly put Brendan's corpse out of sight? Why did he treat him differently than the other victims? From the other victims? Because he didn't want you investigating it. 
He's got some keen insight, I'll give him that. So you suspected this was a farce plotted by Brendan? No, well, I just... I suggested that since Keith hadn't checked the corpse, he might still be alive. I only wanted to believe there was a chance he was alive. I had no conviction about the rest. So I didn't speak about it to Keith. I wouldn't dare risk throwing him off with my amateur opinion. Not to mention, we didn't know whether his wife was safe. Apparently, Keith saw the moment Brendan's head came off, actually. Was it a doll? Right you are, packed with neat little blood packs, it seems. Brendan was hung upside down and had his mouth taped up, and it was dark enough to be hard to tell who's who. Who's whom? <laughs> Just dressing him up the same way made Keith assume it was him. On top of all those flashy rave lights, he dropped the corpse down below so it was impossible to check it closer. And since Keith saw the tour conductor killed right after that, course he'd think Brendan was killed too. If I'd said something, maybe this could have been resolved sooner. But I was paralyzed with fear. I was only worried about my daughter. Even when Keith was running all over the place for us. Don't worry about it. Keith did all that because he wanted to, that's all. He's deeply glad you're all safe. Now, little lady, can we hear from you too? Hear what? Anything. What you thought, what you noticed. Well, I knew he was fake. Because I've met the real boogeyman. Sophie, stop it. Not this tale again. Fine, if you say so, Papa. Guess I'm not saying a word. Go ahead, please. Meeting the real boogeyman sounds pretty juicy. Can you tell me more? Maybe not really met. He just touched my shoulder. But his hand was cold as ice. Right away, I knew it wasn't human. That guy's hands were human, though. They had warmth, so I knew he was just a regular guy. Ha! Huh. So the boogeyman's hands are cold, eh? I ought to tell that to my little squirts. Anything else you noticed? I feel like you might get angry if I say this. I won't tell me. That guy had this cold and emotionless air. Like you couldn't tell what he was thinking at all. It reminded me of Mr. Keith a little. You still think that way now? Not even, because Mr. Keith got really mad at me. He was like, don't worry your papa ever again. Red paint on his face? There was nothing like that. It was all red from blood spurts, though. Really? Keith told me he wore a paper bag with weird paint on it. And one more thing. Did you see any red graffiti in the castle? Saying stuff about monsters or ringtones? No, I didn't. I can't remember Eric's voice. Uh. Mr. Hoover, you're colorblind, if I recall. Maybe you just couldn't see the paint? That's not really how that works. Yeah, but it's white and pink I get mixed up. I can see red just fine. Well, uh, and you, miss? I saw quite a bit of the castle, but none of that. Did you hear that from the others? Don't get me wrong. I don't think you're lying. The others said they saw nothing, too. But then, that makes Keith the one talking nonsense. I don't think Keith is necessarily lying. What do you mean? Because people don't always see the same things you do. Mm. 
Thanks for the assistance, you two. Sorry about calling you in two weeks after the fact. Is not everything settled yet? The police there are in the middle of their investigation. My role's just to assist. I'm going to report your testimonies to them, if that's all right. Is that what that said? It might have said something else, but I think that makes sense. I'll be off now. Eric, take them to the entrance. When our son died, I thought my own life was over too. I couldn't think about anything. Nothing had any taste. But tears would suddenly come away. I don't remember anything about what I did back then. But I do remember one thing. That Keith was always at my side. When I wailed and shouted, he'd hug me, stroke my hair, say it was okay. Eventually, I adjusted to life without our son. I found I could laugh again. But... When I got my own emotions back, I realized Keith had stopped laughing. I had been broken, and so had Keith. Over time, I was able to heal, but he didn't. He was still stuck in the moment of Todd's death. He was always supporting me, so he never faced up to himself. I, str I struggled to be at least a little stronger. Next time, I would protect him, since I wanted him to laugh again. But I couldn't. I, I couldn't repay anything to Keith. And I realized I was a burden on him that would keep him from ever walking again. So, even if we're far apart, as long as he can laugh again, then that's the best choice I can make. My wife always brings me warm milk before I go to bed. And last Father's Day, my little squirt tried cooking me a meal. I definitely don't need milk to go to sleep. And the kids cooking, I'll be blunt, it ain't good. But I'm glad for it. Usefulness and collateral don't mean a thing with this stuff. Keith didn't stay close to you, expecting something in return. That's just what he wanted to do. You guys have got too much sympathy. You don't mind getting hurt for the sake of the other. But can't you notice that one of you being hurt hurts the other? You've just been getting more and more wounded as you go along. You're propping Keith up too, Alana. He can fight day after day because he knows you're waiting at home. As much as I tease him about it, don't think of yourself as baggage. I think I messed up the last line a bit. Depend on him as much as you need. That's what he wants, too. Keith grabbed my hand and smiled, even though he was stabbed and wounded. And what did he say? Got you. Because he finally got what makes him happiness. Happiest. But, man, too much discrepancy between you guys' testimonies and Keith's. Just how am I going to report this to their department? Hey, Helena. He went back home from the hospital today, right? Can I talk? Can I come talk with him now? I'm sorry. Before he goes back home... There's a place he's going to visit, and I'm planning to head there myself. wanted to cry like this. I never forgot about him. Not for a single day. I can't do his voice anymore. Oops. Sorry about that. I'm doing my best. 
Ever since he died, I was scared. I felt like even the slightest sign of weakness would make it all crumble. I acted like I felt nothing. Like nothing disturbed me, even though... No, like nothing disturbed me. I thought that I... I thought then I... Might be able to fool everyone, even myself. I was so stupid. I was broken a long time ago. It was all garbage, but I acted like a champion of justice. It always felt off. Whoever I was working for, I never felt repaid. And when I saw you were safe, and you came up to me, finally I felt happy again. Acting strong just made me weak. It was pointless. Todd would never forgive his father staying broken forever, because I promised I'd protect his mom. I'll take off the blindfold. I'm going to laugh, even if, even if it's at a stupid TV show. If I'm pissed, I'll get mad, and if I'm sad, I'll cry. First, I guess they'll, there'll have to be counseling. There's something seriously wrong with my head, seems like. It's going to be a busy time. It's going to be so busy, I won't be able to do it alone. Helena, I don't think I can deal with just being a good loser. I want a chance. Let me chase after you. Let me get down on my knees. You're the only one I want waiting for me. There's no need for a chance. Didn't I tell you? Divorce or decide. I've decided. Haven't you, too? Ah. We only ever have one umbrella, so we hold it together. And it's fine if we get a little wet, because... It'll be sunny. It'll soon be sunny again. Happy end. Come rain, come shine. It's also playing background music for me, but I can't rep replicate it. Oh yes, the voice acting credits. I don't think I have to read them, right? I haven't read the credits on anything yet, so fair enough for me. I don't know what to say during the credits, though. I think I will just let them go. This took way longer than I thought it would. I thought I'd be like half an hour, maybe. Hmm. <sighs> On Thursday, I am going to play The Hanged Man, I think, which I will also do on Monday and Tuesday. And then next Thursday, I'm going to play Ooblets, because there has been a winter update that I haven't played yet. Um, yeah, and then after that, we'll see. Next Thursday will kind of be my... Holiday special, I suppose. Because it'll be last stream before Christmas, which is what I celebrate. I, I think my model has been weirdly low down this whole time. Which I think is fine, but also strange. Mm -hmm. 
I liked the Hanged Man much more than Sandman. Sandman's still my enemy. <laughs> End. Achievement? Yes, achievement unlocked. Come rain, come shine. I'm a sheep! Congratulations on beating the Boogeyman, and thank you for playing this game. Additionally so, if you played the previous two games in the series, I did. This game was fully voiced with the help of voice actors. Due to the author's fatigue, there's no bonus scenario, but I did receive comments from each of the actors, so take the upper door if you're interested. I'm... you can't hear it, I'm not going to do that. The Something Man series has come to a turning point. The general storyline ends in the next game. I have plans for serious and silly extra chapters afterwards, so please play those if you are interested. Lastly, one more con Lastly, once more, congratulations on beating the game, and thank you for playing. What is this? Ah, Strange Men series. Number one, The Crooked Man. What? Strange Men series, number two, The Sandman. Why is the Sandman just wandering around? That's strange. Oh, he did his gobble sound at me. Watch bonus scene. Oh. How many times have we come here again? Oh, five, I think. Ugh, I can't stand it. We've told them the same story over and over. There's going to be rumors at school about Sophie frequenting the police station. Now, Sophie, don't complain. The police are doing their best. And it's been a month now. This must be the last time. I'm sure of it. Does my princess require a beverage to quell her temper? What shall it be, Your Majesty? Orange juice. Very well. I'll go buy some. Thanks. Fall, fall, fall. <laughs> hey, when those dogs attacked me, you saved me, right? I can't imagine any other reason those dogs would fall asleep so quickly. Oh my god. Oh, no way. I hate this. <laughs> Thanks. I'm having a great time lately. I'm getting along great with Papa and Anne. And Regan. Well, if she wants to get along, I'll give her a chance. Oh, and Regan. Well, if she wants to get along, I'll give her a chance. Things are so much better when than when I carried all my burden myself. Now I know there's someone always looking out for me. Sometimes I really miss you. You're doing okay, right? How about the other fairies? You know, I... Sorry to butt in. Wow, hold on, wait! You've got the wrong idea. I'm not a weirdo or anything, okay? Don't touch me. Brats with a thing for daydreaming aren't the most comfortable people to be around. I'm not daydreaming. Keep it between us, but I've met some... some fairies. Hmm. So you don't believe me? No, I do. I met one when I was a kid, too. Really? Uh... Uh-oh. Yeah, this... Hobo in the area always had a head full of dandruff, so I called him the Dandruff Fairy. You sound like a nice child. Oh yeah, and I've got a co-worker who eats non-stop cup noodles, the Cup Noodle Fairy. Want to be introduced? I thought there would be a weird gay joke. Instead, they're using fairy in a way I've never heard it used before. I don't know what they're trying to imply. <laughs> Why won't you believe me? A 37-year-old who believes in fairies ain't exactly socially adjusted, don't you think? But hey, if they do exist, put in a request to one of your fairy friends to get me some wings. 
Big, fluffy pink ones. What do you use those for? Just want some wings. Why not? Mr. Detective wanna fly away. Huh, you angry? Oh, better step off. One of your friends might cast a spell to turn me into a fluffy white kitty. Maybe instead of filling your head with stupid fantasies, fill in that chest a little. Hey! Strange thing to say. To a child, but also to anyone. It's so pathetic I can't even look at it. Good! Don't! Creep! She went, ugh! Oh no. What's wrong? Haven't been able to sleep since last night, even though I'm sleepy. It's weird. Did you take any medicine? Yep. Anxiolytics, sleeping pills, guess they're not working. Let's talk to each other then. Before you know, you'll be sound asleep, and it'll be morning. Don't you need to sleep? You don't have to stay up for me. It's fine, I'll stay... I'll stay with you until you're snoozing away. Maybe some exercise would have been better. What's that supposed to mean? He gobbled again. Well... Is it going to be the same one? Yeah. Oh, that's quite annoying, actually. I'll just skip through it all. Almost done. Strange Men series number four, The Hanged Man, which I will play next. Few character bios. Keith Baring, age 37, height 6'1", type AB, local police inspector, rank DET3. Cold and unfazed, but determined, he has an obsession with protecting people out of guilt over his son's death. Didn't want to become a detective at first, but met Helena while finding a college and ended up joining the force to win her over. That's not why you should get a job. Sharp-tongued, he often let things slip in front of his son, which his son would later imitate. Dick is his boss, but also like an undesired friend who gets along with his whole family. After the incident, he goes for counseling at Dick's suggestion. He hates liver. Helena Baring. Height, nope, age 33. Height, 5'3. Type, AB. Keith, Keith's wife. A gentle, lovable woman. Appears carefree, but is strong to her core. She's highly expressive, laughing and crying often. She met Keith as a student and quickly married him. After graduating college a year later, they had a son. She suffered emotionally for years after her son's death, but has recovered by now. She doesn't eat meat, not because she's vegetarian, just because she hates it. Her hobby is collecting tea from all over the world. It's not a hobby. It's a collection. David Hoover, age 27, height 6 foot, 
Type O. The Crooked Man's Hero, I know. Works for a trading company. He's made a complete turn from his previous moodiness. Married to Shirley for three months now. They kept their names. An honest fellow, but extremely unlucky. He's athletic and strong, but a little slow on the uptake. He challenged his friend Paul to a chili dog contest, and Paul got gastritis, so he couldn't attend the tour. For the best... Scared of dogs due to a traumatic incident as a kid where he was chased by one for an hour. Sophie Grundler, age 17, height 5'1", type A, high school student, Richard's daughter, the Sandman's heroine, and a lively girl. Didn't like her dad for a long time, but they've reconciled. Maybe as a result, she seems a little too attached lately. Somewhat cheekier than before, but still diligent as ever. Gets along well with David and Shirley as older friends. A little uneasy as girls at school are getting boyfriends. Not finding anyone she likes is her main worry for now. Loves ice cream. Lance Canal, age 31. Height, 5'10". Type, AB. Ex-journalist, photographer. Works for a small publisher. Snarky about everything, but can get freaked out easily. As a journalist, he chased incidents to write articles. And though sarcastic, he was known to hit the mark. Dislikes police due to what drove him out of journalism. Was thinking about making some passes at Helena and getting Keith angry at him to cause a scene. Cool... Richard Grundler, age 44. Height, 5'11". Type, O. Works for a credit company. Diligent and cheerful, but has a timid side. Rather compassionate and sentimental. His daughter often blinds him to all else. It's been over ten years since losing his wife, but he has no intention of remarrying. Mistook David for Sophie's boyfriend at first and got angry, but that's been cleared up and they all get along now. A real drinker who collects drinks. He likes scotch best. He actually suspected the boogeyman was Brendan. He was too focused on his daughter to tell Keith. Shirley Weber. We have nothing to say about her. Age 26, height 5'9", type A. David's wife, a pharmacist, beautiful, strong-willed, and cool, hates to rely on anyone and tries to do it all herself. She often fights with David, fawns over Sophie like a little sister. Dick Anderson, we don't have much to say about him either. <sighs> Age, 39, height 6'6", six, six. type O, local police manager, rank LT1. Keith's direct boss, who understands him well. He has a wife and two children. His stature and face frighten people, but he's gentle, and doesn't raise his voice over little things. Gets along with both Keith and Helena. Eric, no one cares about you. Eric Simpson, age 25, height 5'9", type B. Local detective. Detective one. Keith's subordinate, ambitious but hates to do busy work. His laziness got him stuck with the scariest two at the station, Dick and Keith, but it's yet to prove effective. When David was taken in a while back, he questioned him. He sympathized with him and was a bit relieved to learn he was all right after the incident. Ah, uh, There are so many more characters in this game. Stevie Small, age 31, height 5'7". Type A, tour conductor for the agency N.A. Travel, became a member on the Livingstone Castle Project, and decided to run this test tour. He and the castle's nine servants ended up at, as Brendan Dumont's murder victims, born in Connecticut, and that's where he now rests. Mm. Todd Baring, age 5, height 3'8". Type A, Keith and Helena's son, kind of timid but cheery and honest, clever and alas, quickly learned the bad words Keith used. At age five, he was run over by a truck and died. Okay, finally I am done. Save here. Hello. And then I will go to the title, return to title, and then I will exit my game. 
That was not as short a stream I thought it would be, as I thought it would be. Okay, yes, tomorrow I will play Hanged Man. And not tomorrow. I don't stream tomorrow. On Thursday I will play Hanged Man. Okay, but for now, I'm going to leave. Have a good rest of day, bye.